Hey, how's it going everybody? Gabriel Santiago here. This is the Speaking of Harmony podcast and this is episode 24. It's going to be a nice one because you guys have been asking me for a while now, a bunch of you actually, insistently asking me to talk about dirty loops and their harmony and how they deal with harmony. So you ask, you receive, you shall receive. There you go. We're going to talk about that today. Um, before we get into that, I want to remind you guys that I'm going to be live tonight again in my regular lives. Uh, on Facebook and of course here on YouTube uh, at 8 p.m. Uh, Central Time. So make sure to come down, tune in, and hang out with me. Ask questions. There'll be you know you know interaction and all that. I'm gonna play songs and you guys can ask questions and you know and interact and all that stuff. All that good stuff, right? So I can't wait to see you here uh, tonight. Um, also, before we go, don't forget to subscribe to the channel. Activate the little bell to the notifications. This is all my social media stuff. Give this video a thumbs up. It really helps. And don't forget to sign up for the mailing list. That helps a lot as well. All right. Dirty Loops, man. Wow, everybody asking me about it. Man, you got to talk about Dirty Loops. You got to talk about Dirty Loops Harmony. Woo. I mean, I could spend 10 podcasts talking about uh, Dirty Loops Harmony. And you wouldn't be enough. You know, there's so much there to cover. Uh, of course, I'm talking about the wonderful Swed Swedish uh, group, the trio. If you guys don't know, please start, you know, getting hooked to their music. They're really awesome. Um, it's hard to nail something like that. People, people always want the recipe. Like, okay, you know, I want to sound like Dirty Loops. What should I do? Right? You know, what is the recipe of like? Okay, you gotta do this. Therefore, you're gonna achieve this sound, right? Then you're gonna sound like Dirty Loops. I mean, there's so much to their music and the way they're dealing with harmony that it's hard to just like nail, okay, you gotta do this, and then it's gonna do, you know, it's gonna sound the way you want. Um, you know, it's like every song, there's a story, there's a concept, there's a, some kind of a research involved in what they're trying to achieve, you know? But a few things, though, that I noticed from, from checking their music uh, consistently is that there's always a sense of hashtag voice leading in a lot of stuff that they do. And how do they achieve that? That's what I'm going to talk today about. They use um, great voice leading by bass. You know, they achieve by doing great bass voices. The bass moves in a very nice way. Uh, and also, also another thing I talked about, which is, you know, that uh, single note in the top that kind of like gives you uh, access to all this like non-diatonic harmony. You can use that as, a, as your uh, voice leading um a hook into getting all these chords in right so what i would love to talk about on this one today is this song they did a version for is the classic forever young that's what i played in the beginning the great alphaville song the hit right so they did a version for that which is magnificent it's wonderful it's like super hip the way they deal with the harmony and stuff i'm gonna talk a little bit about what they were doing there and to to help also I did a video um, a year ago about that, kind of talking through and showing how to play that stuff and there's like play alongs and stuff. So I'm gonna be linking this video as well over here so you can come down to the link and download the same play alongs I'm gonna be using. And there's like a chart that I wrote with, this, with the chords and everything else so it's easy to practice with and solo and, and all that stuff. Um, I'm gonna be also linking the original version, the Alphaville one, and also the Dirty Loops version and then my video so you can check it out, right? So, Forever Young, I'm gonna play in B major to kind of match the same keys that Dirty Loops use. This duration is in C, I'm gonna do in B major, right? So, the song is kind of like this, right? beginning very ton of right? so what they did already was kind of take the song to like a minor uh, region right so they did G 
sharp minor, but you can still think as B major in a lot of ways, right? So we already shipped, shifted from like a major kind of sound to an actual like minor sound, right? Um, so here, there's like a lot of like just regular tonal kind of scheme just in minor, right? right it should be kind of an A major sound but they're doing this right so I see this as a, a B uh, major added four with the A on the bass right what happened here a lot is um, they're doing the same bass for the same structure and that changes to say sharp so you can do that and then they're doing this they're doing sort of like an appoggiatura chord right appoggiatura that i talked before so this is like a bass is attacked and not part of the chord and then resolving into the wheel chord right so that's like c sharp minor 9 11 with the bass on d sharp then resolving into C sharp, right? So the attack is sort of like extending that upper to the chord and then resolving, right? So instead of doing like a minor kind of sound it's great right and then uh, later they did this thing when the song repeats the verse instead of doing all that again or repeating what they did they did this Flat five nine sound or eleven, it could be like a two five for B, right? Right, but just like a two chord. to go to the chorus and use that, that actual chord to go to where they want to go right so the cool thing about that part is that the um, like the chorus of the song is in the original is B major right right but instead of doing this get into this dominant here and then six what the loops did was I'll play slow so instead of doing then I will comment right the loops did Super hip man. So what they did here, so instead of playing the you know the root of the chord, they did a, a borrow three chord. So instead of you know if you borrow a three, if you play a third degree here, it would be D sharp minor, right? But then it did D major. So that's more from B minor. So instead of playing uh, B major, they play D major. Right, and then they arrive at this this five that the original song um, I arrived at. Right, I'm gonna be moving this stuff again, as you know. Right, because I have this play along thing over here that I have to <laughs> I have to play along with 
and I can't play at that moment I have to keep rolling this thing forward while I speak so bear with me here this is the perks of doing this live thing while trying to play along with stuff all the good order for you guys right so instead of doing this just regular one to five they did flat three four and then five all right that's a cool way but when they got to the dominant they just didn't play this dominant just f sharp they they kind of blur the line so they did this ad added fourth that really blur the chords beautiful like see? they put the b in the chord right so they did blur that dominant chord right right and then what the song does is go to six four right what you would kind of distill from what they did should be something like going into two right using a dominant and going to two right and then this is just regular tono. Okay. One with the third in the bass, right? So what they did. They should do, be doing this. But they introduced some other cool things here. So This dominant to the second degree, right? This this cadence here. That's why you could kind of be inside that language, right? Um, it would be cool. What they did here was instead of playing this like a dominant, they kept that same ADD4 sound, so really blur the thing again so it's beautiful it's like and then another bomb instead of arriving at the chord you expect them to arrive there is another appoggiatura chord beautiful which is is that C sharp minor 9 11 but with the C on the root go half step down and that becomes a C major 7 sharp 9 sharp 11 Ooh. that sound and then they play the chord right so it's kind of an appoggiatura chord that is forced on the downbeat and then resolve so sounding wise would be this got to the other part uh, very tonal here in the original so what they did here was going to the four to E right but not the E they're expected because if in C in B major They didn't, they didn't go, they'd go to E minor to the minor subdominant, so um, they did E minor, but not like a common E minor. He also did some cool, they also did some cool stuff with the voices. So, uh, did E minor major seven, and then they did this cool thing swapping the mind the major seven for the six which is i already talked about remember creating movement within the chord major seven six 
they did this here too. See, I'm pushing it to the chord. See, and look at the bass. The, look, look at this voice leading, awesome voice leading, super intricate chords, but the bass is moving, man. Look at this. Then another cycle. Super well voice led, super, super. You see this super intricate chords, but the bass is just moving smooth. And another thing along with all the stuff I'm talking about, F sharp, it's everywhere. That top note is gluing the whole thing together. See, I'm gonna sing that voice. everywhere this is one of the keys this note is helping with the voice leading because you have this note up in there and the chords are moving underneath it and the bass is also moving nicely stepwise motion hashtag voice leading super super awesome so playing that again will be Arpeggiatura chord because this is the chord, the six, but he does. Right, you can see this as an F sharp um, added four, four, just part of a G sharp nine chord with the bass on the seven. Then went to C sharp minor, and then uh, the song is setting up to go to the second part of the chorus. Let me move my audio again bear with me bear with me here uh, okay then you're moving over here so instead of going back to that to D or to B it goes to G G major that's another reharmonization brilliant he did borrowed six by G G7 G major 7 instead of G sharp right from B major he goes from 6 from the minor so it's a borrowed minor 6 chord in this context and then this chord is either like you can see as an E minor chord or G over B see still kind of like tonal in a way see so this is this to me could be seen as a uh, F sharp 89 over the third or just that you know A sharp uh, sharp 5 A sharp minor kind of sharp 5 sound however you want to however you want to see that uh, the F sharp is connecting again After that, he does. Um, could be either like you know, B minor six with a you know sharp five. However, you want to call or E minor. That's how it's here. E minor six with the fifth in the bass, right? So that whole thing has a great voice leading, you know, embedded here because you have this F sharp and the bass is going. create another like a cool exercise right out of this thing right out of the bat let me show you this bear with me while I can while I can put this stuff away so we can still play this play along hopefully all right so we go so you can do a cool exercise of using this similar to one of the exercises I gave like a few episodes ago
just out of these two chords, you can create like another cool exercise of this top note that connects everything and the voice is the bass moving. Beautiful. So, and he changes the melody here because he can go. So he does. Does like a little, like, little. So, he changed a little bit for the arrangement. And then here it becomes more tonal. Another five chord that he puts the sharp, the, the added four to kind of give that blurry and not really be like making a, a statement on a dominant chord like Triton and stuff. He's just leaving it and then. He does this little, another great varsiling thing. The bass is moving with the chords, and the F sharp is this united thing, the glue. So, see the bass. Then back for the solo, right? So playing this whole thing would be. sharp again right kind of taking the song still keeping it that minor sound beautiful super different from the original right so that's kind of like what he does what they do in this in this course that's like really brilliant and there's another cool thing they do at the very very ending after the solo they put this like also this super hip progression they do this thing um, after the solo the song restarts here go to this super at A minor 13 11 13 and the bass moves to B see this chord is just a passing chord here on the bass then C then I kind of revoice as this then D and then arrives in C sharp minor then they do the regular cadence too. How this is like um, and then end the song is super awesome progression. So the A minor kind of came out of in it nowhere, right? Then the bit, but see. F sharp is connecting everything in the bass moving stepwise. Super awesome. Then another cycle. It's brilliant, brilliant. Brilliant voice leading and the way they kind of found the score. So it's 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 just a, a search into um, how we can put nice chords into these melodies, right? And not randomly just putting chords, but also creating a path, right? An alternate path. And you get that using that top voice as your kind of guide, right? For getting the voice leading like really solid so you can change stuff underneath. And the bass is also moving chromatically or in stepwise motion, but really kind of in synchrony with this note. And then all these chords are changing. Super different from what you expect from the original song, right? 
So that's a little bit of an insight in some of the stuff that they do. This is by no means like, oh, that's how you do it. No, you know, that's a lot to cover in that. I just try to kind of go deep a little bit into one of these, these songs they arranged to kind of see how they're thinking. So I hope you enjoy that. Before I know when I end the video, I'm gonna put the play along and play a little bit the, the, the part so you can see. Um, and you can download that also in the description of the video. I made a video, as I said before. Go to that video and you find links there so you can download this uh, play along. You're gonna see drums and bass so you can practice. There's a version with me playing guitar too, so you just wanna solo whatever. And also there's a little uh, lead sheet so you can find and, and kind of follow the harmony. Okay. Before we go into that, thank you so much again. Don't forget to subscribe to the channel, activate the little bell thing notifications. This is all my social media stuff. And don't forget to sign up for the mailing list. I hope to see you guys tonight at the live on Facebook or YouTube also and YouTube at 8 p.m. Central Time. I'll see you soon. And let's see if I can still play this stuff. All right? And I'll play... I'll play that and then I'll play a little bit of the coda also. So let me see. Okay, it's gonna be uh, counting and then hopefully we'll play that. All right. the coda so you get those chords when they come down and then I'll say hi for today and I'll see you guys in the next one for sure this is after the solo getting to the end of the song there we go mm -hmm. 